Hi, this is Leah from Open Intro. In this video, we will solve a probability problem in which multiple outcomes satisfy the probability statement. In a classroom with 24 students, seven students are wearing jeans, four are wearing shorts, eight are wearing skirts, and the rest are wearing leggings. If we randomly select three students without replacement, what is the probability that one of the selected students is wearing leggings and the other two are wearing jeans? Note that these are mutually exclusive clothing options meaning a student can't be wearing both leggings and jeans, for example. They're only wearing one of those options. So we know that seven are wearing jeans, four shorts, eight skirts. So that's the 11, 19, and out of the 24, the rest are wearing leggings. So that leaves five are wearing leggings. And now if we randomly select three without replacement, What's the probability one is wearing leggings and the other two are wearing jeans? So how could this happen? It could be the case that the first person we select is wearing leggings and then the next two we select are wearing jeans. So L, J, J. If we evaluate this probability, is this our final answer? No, because this is not the only way that we could select one with leggings and two with jeans. How else could we satisfy that? Right, we could also have the first person wear jeans, the next leggings, and the next jeans, or we could have the first two with jeans and the next with leggings. So these are the three ways to satisfy this statement. And they're non-overlapping, so we can find their probabilities and then add them up. So find the probability of this plus the probability of that plus the probability of that. So we'll start with LJJ. For leggings, that's 5, so 5 out of 24, and then it's without replacement. So the J is going to be 7, but now there's only 23 students left, so it's going to look like 5 out of 24 times 7 out of the 23 remaining students times 6 genes left, now that we've taken one genes out, out of the 22 remaining students. Plus, let's do JLJ. So that's going to be 7 out of the 24 times 5 out of the 23 left times 6 genes out of the 22 students left. And then plus the JJL, similarly, it's going to be 7 out of 24 times 6 out of 23 times 5 out of 22. Now notice that the numerators, even though they're in different order, are equivalent. 5 times 7 times 6, 7 times 5 times 6, 7 times 6 times 5. The denominators are also equivalent, 24 times 23 times 22. So these three terms are equivalent. So we can evaluate them separately and add them up. That would be perfectly fine. But if we notice that they're equivalent, we could just evaluate one of them and multiply by 3. So let's take the first term and multiply it by 3. So that gives us this. And if we evaluate that on the calculator, we get 0 0.0519. That's it for this video. For more free resources, check us out at openintro.org.